Hello everyone, my name is Linda Gundo. I am the CEO and founder of Linda's Perfection Creations. I am a master certified wedding planner and a certified florist. I have over 10 plus years in the wedding industry. Linda's Perfection Creation is an event planning and wedding decor company. We cater to small and large events in and around the Philadelphia areas. We do full service, partial. We do month of coronations, um, most people know that as day of coronations. We handle locations, Delaware, New Jersey, New York, Connecticut. We also do destination wedding as well. And we do destination events. We do summits, we do corporate events, we do fundraiser. So pretty much anything that needs decor in a plane, we handle. We do home and decor staging. So if you're selling your home and you need somebody to stage your home for you, or you have an Airbnb or office space to just change the outlook for that, we do that as well. So for those who are new to my channel, I do a little series. Um, every day to talk about different aspects about wedding planning, business strategy, then events, and so on and so forth. So with today, I'm going to talk about the three decisions that's important when you are planning your wedding and your wedding ceremony. And all of these three things, one always impact the other. So you have to make sure that which one is more important to you, especially when it comes in regards to your ceremony. So... And it's in no particular order, as I stated. The order can be based on how it's important. One is the location um, where you want to get married. Do you want to get married in a, in a church? You want to get married outdoor? You want to get married at the civil court? Those are the things that you know you have to decide where you want to get married. And another thing is that well, you have to pick up efficient. Do you want somebody specific to marry you? Do you want your pastor to marry you? Do you want a family friend? Do you want somebody who are near and dear to your heart? So you have to decide um, who it is that you want to officiate your wedding. The last one is the date and the time. So you have to decide what day you want to get married, what time you want to get married. And the reason why I said those three things impact each other. So for example, let's say you pick a day June 1st. And that's the day that you say you want to get married. And then the official that you want to get married is not available on that date. So, do you want to use this? That having that efficient, efficient, I'm sorry, important to you, or you are willing to consider somebody else? Um, the location. Let's say if you go to the church and the church said, "Well, on this day we cannot get married because it's a, a holiday." I know most church when I marry people are around Easter because it's a big holiday. Um, so if you're picking Easter weekend, good luck finding the church that will marry you. Um. It is very difficult because land and everything comes into play. So sometimes those are the things that kind of, you know, and Christmas holidays, special holidays. So those are the things that you need to take in the time and then the time and the date. So maybe you have the efficient, you have the location, but the time and the date not work. So you have to decide which one of those three things is important to you before you start even to your planning stage. Because one, all the order can impact each other. So you can pick your top one and then work around the words and also thing is i tell every couple is to be flexible because when you're choosing your date i know some day that's very important is that people do one that day is meaningful the, the numerical numbers and other aspect of that that they want that or maybe it's a favorite date or, or something so if the date and the time is important to you today the then you have to make sure that everything work around that date and time and if it doesn't, then you have to find secondary option or the option that will work with your days and time, vice versa. So once you have those things packed down, then you can start planning. So, and even if you're getting married in the church, so let's say I'm going to just talk about church sharing because it's typically most people do. Um, I'm just going to say that. Um, if you are getting married, you got to think about your reception space as well. You might pick a day for your ceremony that your dream reception space may not have available. So those are things that you need to take into account and why you should start planning early. Because then if your dream venue doesn't work, then you can rotate. And especially 
if you are getting married in the peak of a wedding season, you know, the, the spring weddings and the fall weddings, especially October. October is a big one. A lot of people tip when they get married in October. And then you have the May. May is also a big day. Then you have the early spring. So you have to decide which one is more important because it can impact your wedding in a big way. You cannot, I would love to say you can have it all. Sometimes setting people are lucky and they can have everything they want. But there are times that you may not. And maybe you have all your dick in and you might have a planner that you want to work with. That plan is not available. I know a bride that her male owner, she wanted her male owner in the wedding. That's the only person. It's her childhood friend. That's the only person she wanted to walk be her maid of honor. And the day that she picked for a wedding, the person couldn't do it. That day is the day she was taking her kid back to college. So with that being said, she had to make a, she changed her day because she wanted that person to be there. So you, that's why I said, you have to decide what is more important to you. And if those things are important, then you have to plan around it. But then sometimes as you have to be a little flexible and open-minded as well, because sometimes in the industry, you may not always get what you want. So just be mindful of that. And with everything falling into line, you pick your date, you got your time, and then your time. Do you want a morning wedding? Do you want a brush wedding? Do you want a late reception? Which part is more important to you? That some people want to get married at 2 o'clock. Okay, it's fine if you want to get married at 2, but you got to think about it. You're getting married at 2. The ceremony ends at 3, 2.30. And then you have, okay... Let's say photograph is like around three, four. So you cannot start your reception at six o'clock when you're having a morning a ceremony that starts at two. Because what that do, there's a lot of hours in between you have to call for. And that means you gotta have more cocktail hours, you gotta have more things for the guests to do. So when you're picking your timing for your wedding, make sure you don't have too many gaps in between. Because too many gaps add too many money to your budget because you gotta Maybe do a long cocktail hour. Cocktail hour typically is one hour. You don't want to do anything more than an hour. People start to get dreary. People start to get wary. People start to get hungry because cocktail is just nice and nobody just want to sit around and guests start to leave and people are not really there. So if partying is important, if you want a late party, some people maybe because all your reception is always five hours. Um, you can opt or for more. Some people do four hours, but it's 10 is like five hours. If you want to do six or seven. So you got to think about it. Do I want a cocktail hour? Maybe that starts at six to seven and then have dinner and then at 9, 11 or do I want it to end later or do I want it to have early any? So all those things you need to keep intact of all the hours that you are advocating for your wedding. You don't want to have, you don't want to make it too tight, but you still want to have a little gap to move around. How, how are you going to get things around? Another thing is how far is your reception or your ceremony space? That's another thing. You don't want your guests to have to drive an hour from the wedding reception, from, from the ceremony to the wedding reception. That's a long distance. Sometimes these people may not come to your ceremony or sometimes people may just go to the ceremony space and not come to the reception, vice versa. So you have to think about it when you are booking places, you want to make sure at least, you know, about 30 minutes, 30 minutes, not bad. If you go to do 45, that's a little hot stretch, but I would say try to stay within 30 to 40 minutes of where both places are. So it's not that complicated. Some people opt out to having pictures taken at the reception location or maybe doing a ceremony at the reception. So if you're doing those things, then you don't have to worry about, you know, timing, but you still have to make sure that the time is okay because you're thinking about when you have your guests on the same site and everything on the same site, you have to make sure that you allocate the time better. So most, as I said, most reception ceremony is for half an hour. Some people tend to go five an hour, but most of it is... It's half an hour, tops. Say your vows, exchange anything and go. But some churches and some places, maybe people have special performance or they have special things. But all my advice to brides is that just keep in mind with your guests, especially if it's in the heart of the summer and people are outside, they are hot, and the, the weather temperature, 
you you want to be very mindful of timing for people and you don't want people to just keep waiting and waiting on you and in prior videos i also made talk about how you don't want to plan your wedding to accommodate late commerce if you want your wedding to start at two o'clock let it start two o'clock don't put an invitation to and then you're not starting to four or you're not starting to three and then those who grandma or auntie who usually comes early show up there have to wait 45 minutes or an hour or longer waiting for you because you want to make sure that the house is packed because your friends or your family or your grown and people don't show up on time or you are always late make sure you will be respectful of people's time but that's all for today Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Once again, my name is Linda Gunda. I am the CEO and founder of Linda's Perfection Creations. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. You can sign up for my wedding planning class where I, you can learn more about how to plan your wedding and learn more detail. And you can also schedule a free 30-minute consultation where you can ask me questions about my services and I can get to know you on a little better about your wedding and we can decide if it's the right fit. Thank you and have an amazing day. Bye.